Hi everybody, it is now February 7, 2018. I'm going to go through headlines. I'm just going to read a couple of excerpts from articles. But everything that I am showing you, um, I hope that those who support Trump will really take a closer look at what Trump is doing. And at the end, I am going to show you how Virtually everything that is taking place today was planned. This has been going on for decades, but it was planned a long, long time ago. I'm going to go back to that 1969 uh, lecture that took place. Dr. Day, who gave a lecture in 1969, the, he began the lecture by saying, this will not be recorded. No pens, no pencils, no paper. No notes will be taken. We know that these crazy satanic elite love to inform us of what will be taking place. And I guess that is, um, well, if we don't do anything, hey, you knew. You had the knowledge. You could have done something to stop us so they don't feel guilty for all the people that they kill and mangle and and leave suffering I guess um, I, look how do you get into that kind of mind set but if you really look at what Trump is doing well we're ble being played again he is Mr. Surveillance he is so for 5G that he has made it a national security priority and he is rolling it out as fast as he can. He wants it out very fast. He has signed legislation to continue the uh, surveillance. He has used Obama's, that National Defense Authorization Act that Obama signed, signing away our due process rights that National Defense Authorization Act that allowed our military to pick up Americans and detain them indefinitely without charges, without the right to a speedy trial, without the right to even know what their charges were, without the right to an attorney. And Trump is using it. He is, he has already detained an American citizen for over three months and that American citizen does not know what the charges are. So when word came out because Obama signed it New Year's Eve when everybody was drunk and partying yeah that's when they sign away the Constitution. Um, when word got out Obama came out and said well don't worry I'm not going to use it and then everybody went oh good but he left it there for other presidents to use and Trump is using it. Trump administration to test biometric program to scan faces of drivers and passengers and vehicles. So when you're driving down the road they can identify you as you are on the interstate driving 70 miles per hour. Why do you think we have all of those cameras all over the place? All right. Um, just also want to mention again that everything, these apps, these, um, the internet, Google, Facebook, it's all government. So these app companies that sell you these apps, here a smart meter parking app, and you sign agreements with these companies to hand over your personal information and you sign agreements where this company is saying we reserve the right to disclose your personally identifiable information to others as we believe appropriate and well if asked we will provide requested information to relevant authorities upon the request of such authorities so we are willingly handing over all of our personal information to authorities. These companies are fronts 
of our intelligence agencies. Um, that GPS that's on your iPhone or smartphone, if you turn it off, you think that GPS is not tracking you. It is tracking you still. And when you turn off that phone, they can turn it back on. So the surveillance state is only getting wider. Its tentacles are reaching into every possible um, product that you buy. And our surveillance state knows that. Trump is not, he is not doing anything about the spraying of the toxic chemicals. He's not doing anything about vaccines. He said that he was going to create a vaccine safety commission. And Robert F. Gen uh, Kennedy Jr. was going to head it. So I get comments like this when I say things like that. Well, how could he possibly do everything in just one year? You delegate. Now, the Vaccine Safety Commission, he could have easily picked up the phone and said, okay, all right, Robert, get it done. And that would have been about 30 seconds. He has not done that. The GMOs, the toxins that we are now, wow, so saturated in, and the toxic toll, well, we're on overload. He's not doing anything about that. He has appointed lobbyists for, uh, from major corporations. He's appointed an awful lot of Goldman Sachs. He has appointed Big Pharma to head a health agency, and I can't remember exactly what the agency was. And he appointed as Secretary of Interior, and I can't remember that guy's name, and that guy came out and said, United States will have public and private partnerships throughout the country. Public and private partnerships, Agenda 2030. And he has not drained the swamp. So, Trump supporters, please, don't get angry. Please take a step back and look at what he is doing. Um, but the this article that I have uh, brought to uh, your attention several times New World Order Plans Exposed by Insider in 1969. In this article, they go through, it's a long transcript of Dr. Dunnigan, he attending this lecture of Dr. Day, and Dr. Day was an insider, so Dr. Day revealed the plans for the United States at this lecture in 1969. In the early 80s, I think 82, Dr. Dunnigan sat down with a journalist, I believe, and recollected that the conversation or the lecture of Dr. Day. This is a very long transcript, but if you don't know anything about it, I do hope that you click on the link below and read it because everything that you will read, everything outlined here has come to pass. Everything. And I'm not going to go into it. But it has come to pass and we are living what was discussed back in 1969. No more security. Things will fall apart. Amtrak, another Amtrak train accident. I'm not talking about the one last week in South Carolina. This one was today. A high-speed Amtrak train bound for Penn Station broke apart. We've had four Amtrak 
accidents just this year. And what does it say about the no security? Because I took excerpts of this. Um, No more security, nothing is permanent. Older people feeling like it was time to move on. They feel they couldn't even keep up with all of the changes. How many changes? I mean, the, the rapidity of change that is occurring in this country is head spinning. It's hard to keep up with everything. But what, what will they bring about to make Americans no longer feel secure Infrastructure will collapse, dams, bridges, and more accidents involving airplanes and railroads and automobiles. It will contribute to the feeling of insecurity that nothing was safe. Bada boom, right there. Um, market earthquake is coming. Oh, we had an earthquake in Taiwan, I believe. I forgot to bring that article up. That earthquake. It was six point something kilometers deep. When you see those very shallow earthquakes, uh, that's a signature that it was brought about by man and his technology. That earthquake was induced. But here, another earthquake. An earthquake is coming. Carl Icon warns a lot of people will pay the price like in 1929. So have you been noticing our fabulous market? It took a nosedive, what um, was it 16 some odd hundred points yesterday and now it's back up 567 points. Stock market's wild ride. Wall Street's become just a roller coaster. What the hell is going on here? We've been listening to the crash is coming, the crash is coming, the crash is coming. Okay, Carl Icahn. The market has become a much more dangerous place. It's like 2008 when everybody was buying mortgages and CDC S's. There is a huge bubble of passive money flowing a sort of euphoria and a lot of people are going to pay the price just like in 1929. I do think the market will bounce back and well it's already bounced back but these are the rumblings before the earthquake. The market is telling you something it's telling you it's very dangerous it's way over leveraged. So is that crash will they pull it? Perhaps or not, we all know that it is, it has been artificially propped up with quantitative easing, the printing of money, throw it into the economy. But we know the stock market is manipulated. So, they may very well, you know, what we are seeing, that kind of, you know, fluctuation. Well, when I saw Drudge and I captured it, Dow 666, I thought, isn't that interesting? Is this a message? Is this portending? The crash that many of us have been talking about is coming. Perhaps. But in this world, when you have so many sick, twisted liars lying to you all of the time, all you can do is speculate. You can't have any kind of security in knowing anything. So, the wars. I, my hunch, Trump was put in office to bring about nuclear war. And when you say that to people, and you say that a nuclear war, it will be deliberate, they will bring it about, it won't be because of North Korea or Iran, 
it will be the United States. And then people look at me and say, why would they do that? Why would they drop a nuclear bomb? They live on this planet as well. They can simulate a nuclear bomb. They could drop a bomb, say it's nuclear, when it's not, and have the people in that region experience the suffering. And those people will think it's the radiation from the nuclear bomb. But it may be the radiation from 5G, from cell towers, from Gwen Towers. Oh, there's so many possibilities. So, the Trump administration seeks more usable nuclear weapons? Really, Trump? Okay, we've got Americans here who are really suffering from this really bad economy, and yeah, you have created some jobs. Okay, well, you have also given an unprecedented amount of money to the military-industrial complex and to our Pentagon. But now... The Pentagon, I read just a couple of days ago, is seeking $70 billion more on top of the most it has ever gotten, and that was from Trump. Okay. Now Trump wants more usable nuclear weapons. Well, I guess the Pentagon is going to get $70 billion more. Yeah, they need to develop new, lower-yield nuclear weapons that they believe would be more usable than the current arsenal. Everything is about giving our military-industrial complex more and more money. And the more money it gets, the less you have. So, all of the warmongering that we have listened to since Trump has taken office he comes in, he bombs Syria. Uh, without any evidence of that chemical attack, bomb them. I don't care about, I don't need evidence. I'm just going to bomb them. How many people has he killed, innocent people with his drone strikes, more than Obama did in his eight years? This guy is a war nut. So China moves 300,000 troops closer to North Korean border. Are we looking at, and these are articles that were just posted today, are we looking at crash of the economy or war? And with Trump, well, my, my gut feeling, we're looking at war and then the collapse of the economy. This posted today, man who sold America the Iraq war just warned Iran is next, but is anyone listening? Not Americans, but it was Lawrence Wilkerson, chief of staff of former Secretary of State Colin Powell. He wrote an op-ed in the New York Times today, and he accused the Trump administration of manipulating evidence and fear-mongering in the same way the Bush administration did to get us into the Iraq war. The title of his article, I helped sell the false choice of war once, it's happening again. And, you know, he said the selling of the Iraq war, he said uh, the United Nations, much of the world didn't buy it, but Americans did and that was all they needed. Now, they don't, uh, frankly, we, we have become obsolete. Unless Americans in the millions got out and screamed, no more war, that would delay things. Are they going to get out in the street about anything at this point? No. Um, so, Wilkerson said the Trump administration is using much of the same playbook to create a false impression that war is the only way to address the threats posed by Iran. Nikki Haley, the unqualified U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, said this, Iran was not complying with Security Council resolutions regarding its ballistic missiles program and Yemen. Yemen? Oh, okay. 
um, Yemen. The United States and Saudi Arabia has destroyed that country and left children to starve to death. But here we are, like people like Nikki Haley and Trump, who calls, you know, uh, uh, Kim Jong Un, who is, you know, and then we had Bush, you know, they're the evil empires. Iran, Iran, who has never started war, has showed no aggression against another country in over two centuries. But Iran is the evil empire. This is such, we, I'm sorry, it is so unbelievably reprehensible, unconscionable, uh, immoral. These words are, these uh, understatements for the evil that comes out of our, our government, our government officials, whether they're presidents or congressmen, ambassadors, it, it's disgusting. So just like Powell, Mr. Powell, Miss Haley showed satellite images and other physical evidence available only to the United States intelligence community to prove her case, but the evidence fell significantly short. The war with Iran will be very different. It is a country of almost 80 million people whose vast strategic depth and difficult terrain make it a far greater challenge than Iraq. It would be 10 to 15 times worse than the Iraq war in terms of casualties and costs, not if we drop a nuclear bomb, right? And that, well, yeah, Trump is absolutely 100% capable. We know how much Israel wants to bomb Iran. So Trump, buddy, buddy with Netanyahu and loves Israel. In fact, loves Israel so much that Trump increased aid to Israel as if Israel needs more money of ours. We give three billion a year to Israel when we're hurting over here. But no, Trump, Trump I gave, uh, I believe gave, was it 3.7 billion? Yeah, under Trump, increase it to Israel. They need it for the war that is about to come. So if Netanyahu calls Trump and says, drop the big one on Iran, you think Trump is going to say no? UN envoy says North Korea is only months away from striking U.S. Right, okay. But listen to this. Trump tells Pentagon to plan a military parade. A military parade. China, Russia, North Korea, they have their military parades. And now, under Trump, we're going to have a military parade. Because the guy is another psychopathic nut job who is all about war, all about the military industrial complex, and all about military. Bra ra. And you know what? A whole lot of Americans will be, wow, Trump. How great. We get to have a military parade. And they will think that they're exceptional and morally superior. They can't face, they can't face the truth of how in exquisitely evil we are. The increasing likelihood of nuclear war should straighten out all our priorities. Another one posted today. Um, if you want to read, you know, I, I don't even care about the details. Because everything that you read coming out of our government is a lie. But here, U.S. invasion occupation of Syria includes 14 U.S. military bases there. We have bases in Syria. We've announced our permanency in Syria under Trump. 
We're there. We've already taken over. Do we even know what is going on in Syria? No. But all of these wars continue. North Korea doesn't have the capability intent to attack U.S. warplanes, experts say, um, and North Korea, they have aging MIG fighters, won't stand a chance against the most powerful U.S. fighters. Um, it's ready to deploy new surface-to-air missiles that analysts say could potentially hit targets as far as 93 miles. North Korea has inadequate radar systems which have failed to detect the B-1 bombers as they flew east of North Korea. North Korea is our puppet state. It is the Pentagon vassal. They use North Korea. And I would not doubt that our presidents, they call. They call uh, Kim Jong-un and say, okay, uh, we need you to make more threats against us so we can increase our Pentagon button uh, budget and um, especially for that pivot to Asia, Asia. We want to take over Asian countries so we need you to come out and threaten us so that we can show our military might in more countries in Asia. We can park ourselves in Asia. And there's more. Um, analysts, experts, there is no definitive publicly available proof that North Korea has a missile within the range to strike the continental United States. Um, no one outside of North Korea has solid information about the characteristics of North Korea's nuclear weapons design, especially about whether or not the weapons that have been tested are uh, cumbersome laboratory devices and readily, readily, readily militarized designs that could be put into bombs or carried on ballistic missiles. Um, our analysis shows that the current variant of this ballistic missile may not even be capable of delivering a first generation nuclear warhead to Anchorage, Alaska, although such a possibility cannot be categorically ruled out. But even if North Korea is now capable of fabricating a relatively lightweight, miniaturized atomic bomb that can survive the extreme re-entry environments of long-range rocket delivery, it will, with certainty, not be able to deliver such an atomic bomb to the lower 48 states of the United States. Now, even if they have uh, the capability of striking Anchorage or striking Hawaii, that's bad. I don't want to see that happen. But how many times have we heard from New York Times mainstream media that they have the capability of striking inside the continental United States, and that is an abject lie? And even our own Secretary of Defense, James Mattis, has stated, North Korean missiles, not a capable threat against the United States. All right, let me just read some of these excerpts. Um, you will have no more security. There will be a lot of accidents. And uh, the preeminence of the United States will have to be destroyed. They, this was all back in 1969. So they were planning on destroying American industry. That's why all of our jobs were sh shipped off to other countries and to give those other countries a chance to build their industries like Japan. Automobiles will be imported from Japan, Toyota, Honda, and the American automobile, it will be made to fall apart so that you will buy Japanese automobiles. Uh, the idea that you not feel terribly secure, promoting the notion that the world isn't a terribly reliable place. The United States was to be kept strong in information, communications, high technology, education, and agriculture. The United States 
was seen as continuing to be sort of the keystone of this global system, but heavy industry would be transported out. And that's exactly what took place. The earthquake, well, weather control, weather will be seen as a weapon of war, a weapon of influencing public policy, climate change, global warming to bring about sustainability. We're living it. Everything. Everything that was planned, they've been successful. Falsified scientific research. Okay, we have falsified scientific research coming out of every institution now, but that IPCC, the International Panel for Climate Change, United Nations, falsified science on global warming. In 1969, it was about this new international governing body probably coming through the United Nations. The United Nations had not at that time received worldwide respect. It was not seen yet as the Kumbaya organization that was going to be bringing peace and prosperity to the world. But now it is. And guess what? They said efforts would continue to give the United Nations increasing importance people would be more and more used to the idea of relinquishing some national sovereignty to the United Nations. Everybody would be so fearful as hysteria is created by the possibility of nuclear war. What have we been hearing all year? Nuclear war, nuclear war, nuclear war. North Korea, Iran, Trump. There would be a strong public outcry to negotiate a public peace and people would willingly give up national sovereignty in order to achieve that peace and thereby this would bring in the new international political system, the new um, international political system under the umbrella of the United Nations, one world government. If there were too many people in the right places who resisted this, there might be a need to use one or two or possibly more nuclear weapons. The insiders, we mean business. One or two nuclear bombs may have to be dropped. And then even the most reluctant would yield. I do believe that this is why Trump was put in office. And it also goes into the terrorism that we are now living. And it talks about Americans, how they had it too good. So we might just have to bring a little bit of terrorism to the United States. And we got it. Financial control. Money would become predominantly credit. Exchange of money would not be cash. Um, the ability to save will be greatly curtailed. And if people did save, then they will be taxed more. The idea was that nobody would achieve any kind of wealth because wealth represents power and wealth in the hands of a lot of people is not good for the people. So this is why they have destroyed the economy to keep everybody down and their wealth and their positions of power. Well, they had the power. They had the wealth to bring the world under their thumb. These elite, globalist, satanic, crazy, Rothschild, Rockefeller people and their puppets. Um, talks about how they would bring about getting people to use a lot of credit, borrowing money on their credit cards and then encourage them to go bankrupt and that would destroy their credit. It's all come about. It's all deliberate. Everything that you are seeing now, you've got to view it in the lens of decades of work. The boiling frog scenario. Um, and now that they have these frequencies, you know, Trump has been talking about dropping a nuclear bomb. 
have you heard any kind of public outcry? Hardly any. You know, you can hear crickets. Americans now, the majority, they're walking dead people. Nothing registers. So, um, but they will need something very big to hand over, you know, so sovereignty to the United Nations. No, I'm sorry. Trump is not making America great again. Trump is just causing more and more chaos. Very briefly, the memo. That memo. The release of the memo, all it did was create a divide and conquer and excuse my language, shitstorm. And that was the point. And Trump is smart enough to realize that that's exactly what it would do. The memo didn't prove anything. The memo written by uh, Nunes, Republican, his staff, the committee voted on party lines, whether or not to release the memo, the Republicans, because they're the majority, got to release the memo. And all it did was get those Democrats and Republicans fighting one another, but everybody talking about it endlessly. Endlessly. But a memo, well, all one can do is speculate. So you have the Democrats coming out and saying that the Republicans had misrepresented the facts. They distorted the facts. They secretly altered the facts. Brilliant. Drama. The drama queens in Washington, D.C. that set off these storms. And the mainstream media talks about it endlessly until they're told to stop talking about that and now talk about this. If he had released the actual application submitted to the FISA court, well, then we would have facts. But no, it was a memo. So it did nothing, nothing, except get Republicans and Democrats fighting one another. So yeah, Everything that we are seeing is a staged play. Come out of the matrix. Come out of the matrix. Please, Trump supporters, reconsider your support because and and you don't have to get angry. I'm seeing and hearing from more and more people who finally got it with Trump. They finally are out of the matrix. They will never vote again. They see their government for what it is. Your government is not there to help Americans. And Trump is not there to help Americans. You get thrown your crumbs and people go, wow, Trump is really doing something. No. We have more and more Americans getting destroyed on a daily basis. We're going down. Trump is not going to save the day. All links are below.